Welcome to 3Mac. Do you want to learn about computational design, advanced manufacturing, materials modeling, or integrity assessment? Then this is the channel for you. I regularly upload new content, so please hit the subscribe button below for regular updates. Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. And uh, this is the part three of uh, analysis of self-healing shape memory alloy composites. In the first part, I explained to you how to model the matrix material uh, using XFEM and see how uh, the crack propagation in the matrix. In the second part, I showed you how to model a typical shape memory alloy uh, with, which shows the martensitic transformation and then uh, coming back to the initial state, that is the re reverse transformation, we would say. And in today's video, I will show you how to integrate the these shape memory alloy fibers with the matrix material and then try to produce or uh, show you how to simulate this kind of process which was again sent to me by a subscriber uh, via a paper. Paper was not that self-explanatory and there were many things which were not explained there so I had made some assumptions and I will explain those assumptions as we go on. Again if you haven't seen my previous videos please first go through the, those part one and part two of the two of the video because I'm not going to explain everything what I have done for the fiber and, and the matrix before. I'll just show you in this in, in this tutorial so so it is highly recommended that you look at that first. Thank you very much. Let's move into the uh, real tutorial. Okay, let's start solving this problem. Again, if you haven't gone through the part one and part two of the video, then please go through it first because some of the stuff I will be showing here is coming from that video. So I'm not going to explain those things here and I will just quickly go through them. So the first thing is the part I already showed you in the first part how to draw the matrix material and then how to draw the fibers and we already did the stress analysis on that in part one and part two for both the cases. So I have the parts properties are very much the same as I assigned before uh, here. So you see I have the elastic plastic matrix and I have the shape memory alloy and again the properties are I have already discussed those in the previous video. So Please have a look at that. It's very much what, what was there. Then I go to the assembly and what I do is I bring the first the uh, matrix material and then I start to bring each of the fibers. So if, if I show you the this model tree then you will find out that I have seven instances here and each of these instances is, is the matrix, the fibers and then I just adjust them. Once I bring them here I just adjust them using translate option. To align like this again I haven't followed the same distances and same parameters as they have done in the paper which was discussed in the first part but I just used random distribution so you see the gaps are, might not be as regular as it was in the paper there are many things which are not clear in the paper so I have not gone through that as well and I have made assumptions and I will I will go through them as, as we move on so I have now assembled everything but still they are separate so Abacus doesn't know if these are all connected or not. In reality, these fibers should be somehow bonded. In the paper, they have given references and, and some assumptions they have made that these bond fibers are not bonded with the matrix, so they not, don't need to model any interaction between the two. But in reality, there should be an interaction, especially when it's com contracting. The fibers might start to, uh, you know, kink or bend or buckle, and that there will be an interaction with the matrix, but that's not modeled here and also in that paper as well but that's a key issue in this modeling and one has to really justify why they haven't done that stepwise what i have done here is i haven't modeled the whole thing again i have modeled the loading part so this is the first step where i load the sample so i pull it from this direction as the as is given in the paper i'm using the stabilization because i will have a crack propagation to avoid any convergence issues i'm using a very large number of increments so that it doesn't stop if it reaches to a bigger number and these are the minimum initial and maximum time increment sizes I have used. Other things are default, so I'm not changing anything. The second step is not necessary for you guys, but I normally do it after this kind of loading, especially once I have done that, I want everything to stabilize. So I just stop everything at that point where it stopped in the last step and I let it run without any changes so that all the things and matrices are computed without any changes and everything is stabilized. So again parameters are the same as before and I'm not changing anything so this is very really midday but this is not required in my opinion but you can avoid that and the third one is basically the unloading step where I remove the 
displacement boundary condition are loading and then it will start to relax as was done in the paper again i'm using stabilization and in this case what i have done is i have given a fixed time increment because it may take a long time because of the cracks and surface interactions so i'm using a large number of increment and i say that use increment size of 0.001 because there is not much of the loading or unloading it's only unloading in this case so i have assumed this value which is more reasonable but again you have to play around with this number to come up with a more accurate uh, prediction so or again you can go with automatic as well if you want to i just wanted to reduce my time for simulation all right so this is for the step definition if you want to have a thermal heating and then relaxation step so then you can also create a new step and you can just select for example from here couple temperature displacement analysis and then you can define the predefined temperatures and see how temperature really changes the whole response so i haven't done that as well again i didn't have time for that but if you if you require just let me know now i go to the loading step and in this case you can see i have no forces as was given in the paper but in this case i have mostly displacement boundary conditions so i have initially i fix this surface in x direction as i did in the first part for the matrix in the second case i am fixing the bottom part of the matrix as i did in the first part again and here i apply displacement boundary condition on a reference point i have in i have created an interaction between this reference point and this surface so that i only have to apply displacement boundary condition on this you can apply here as well it's not a big deal still abacus doesn't know how these fibers are attached to the matrix so we will define that in the next module which is interaction module then step two as you i told you nothing is there so i just keep everything fixed nothing is changing and this means i'm just trying to stabilize the structure after crack growth and everything and the last step is basically i just remove the x boundary condition and let it relax so that's what i have done there is no initial condition in this case and uh, this is just a temperature i have applied which is the initial temperature as i told you if you apply a next temperature because my temperature material properties are with reference to 25 degrees so i just defined that but if you define a couple temperature analysis as a step four then you you might have to apply a different boundary condition and in that case also i think they have used the same same procedure but they didn't explain clearly what they did it what you can do is you can increase the temperature here with in a temperature displacement analysis and you can see the effect of temperature here as well or you can apply as a boundary condition depends if there is there is conduction and convection going on in your material so that's again not a big question which they haven't answered clearly in the paper but i think if, if you assume that it's a very small sample and fusion it takes a place really largely and everything is uniformly heated immediately then you can just apply the this predefined condition of temperature here directly and i think that should be enough but again i leave it for you guys to decide mesh is the same you see this was a mesh for the fiber and this is i use one element for for this case oh, for the fiber sorry and that was the matrix all right and yeah interaction i didn't show you all so interaction i missed for example so in this case i have an interaction which is the crack so again if you go back to part one i showed you how to define this crack thing you have to go to special if you remember and you see i have defined a xfpm crack you have to select the geometry and then you have to select the crack where is the crack so you have to pick this crack line and again the whole process is explained in part one so have a look at that and then so this is interaction is basically about this crack which is already which we have already discussed we have interaction type property and this is just involved in the crack part so now the important part is how to apply the boundary condition so i created a reference point again if you remember creating a reference point is you go to tools create a reference point and then click on any coordinate where you want to really create a reference point and then what i do is i create if you press create constraint and i use this coupling option here which will couple all the kinematic constraints or kinematics of the whole thing with, with a specific point so that's what i do here i select this surface and then i select the control point which is this reference point so you see now everything on this surface is connected to this and i'm only connecting in this case u1 because everything is fake so i'm just moving in x direction so that it, it can still contract when i pull it which is the case because of the surface is free so this is again an assumption i have made but yeah you can decide if it's, it's good enough for you or not 
second thing is how now to tell Evergill that these fibers are connected with this surface right or they are inside the material so I use a tie constraint which is the easiest way of doing it so I select all these nodes of the fiber you can do it by removing you can create a node set by removing the matrix and create a node set for these fibers on this side and then for the nodes at this side of for the fibers and then you select those as a master or slave and then you select this surface of the matrix as one of the surfaces generally softer surfaces is assumed to be the slave surface so again you can decide which one is softer in your case and that's what I have done on the other side as well so if you look at the other side I go to click on this and then you see it gets red again so I first created the node set for the fibers and then I created the surface and then basically I just defined them as in the interaction so again how to create it you just go create constraint select tie when you select this continue then it will ask you to select the surface or node region and then master or slave so again as I told you the stiffer surface is generally a recommended to be used as master surface so I have done that this way I'm going to cancel it because I already have these interactions here so this way now we have told that this surface is associated with with this end of the fibers and this surface is associated with these ends of this end of the fibers here and there is no interaction in between as I told you which is a critical issue but in this case they avoid it they ignored it so and they provide some just just some references for that all right so that's what we have done here and then I, and I go there and then I, I run it so you see I have run it and it's completed so let's go to the result and see how it looks like so you see uh, my crack was somewhere corrective was somewhere here it grows in the first step let me play the animation so you see it starts to grow the fibers are pulled and then in step two it relaxes and then step three it tries to starts to go back or relax because I have removed the boundary condition so it was a quick simulation as you see you can play around with the things like for example if you want to see uh, plastic equivalent plastic strain in this material so you can plot that if you want to see the volume fraction of the martin site so you can plot those they are very much the same in all the fibers in this case at the end but maybe it will change as you move along so so that's another thing so you see now the distribution changes in the fibers because this volume fraction is changing for, for martin site also so there are many things so again you can play around with that you can play see see what, what is required for your own simulation and you can do this way so i hope this short video makes sense i had been busy with many things so it took me some time to prepare this but uh, in this short time i tried to explain to you there are many assumptions and there are not many things which were not clear in that paper which was sent to me by the subscriber but i had made some assumptions which i explained on the way so again you decide how to do it sometimes if you don't find information on the paper it's better to email the corresponding authors and see if they can provide you more details generally people in academic world are helpful and they normally reply to you so it's, there is no harm in sending one email and ask them so that's pretty much it enjoy your time if you are interested in more reading then we had done some work on porous shape memory alloys some time ago almost nine ten years ago and this is the paper so please have a look at that if we developed a constitutive model where we extended the normal shape memory alloy model, constitutive model, to a porous shape memory alloy because in shape, porous shape memory alloy you have voids which start to grow and then coalesce, and your shape memory alloy can fail. So we worked on that. Also, the, as I told you, fiber matrix interaction is a very important problem. We have done in the, some work in the past on that as well. So one of these paper is basically deals with that. In this case, it's not the shape memory alloy, but it, it gives you an idea that okay, how you can find out what is the bonding strength of a fiber with the matrix in your case so again you can do simple fe analysis by if you can get some fiber push out curves from some experiments or some literature so all the best and i will come back with some more interesting stuff in future so bye for now